So our next item for this evening is an update on the e-cigarette uh, use ordinance. I think um, you know, we've been looking at this ordinance now for, it's been more than a year, uh, probably approaching two years, and it's been before the Unincorporated Services Committee, I believe that's where it started, maybe about two years ago. But since that time, it's going to um, the Health Committee a few times. And I think the last time it's come from the Health Committee, uh, the ordinance has been crafted in a way that it's coming back around so people can get an update in terms of what is being uh, proposed and then uh, we'll be taking it back to the, to the board of supervisors or to the board of supervisors that really hasn't gone to the board yet. So, right. Thanks, I'm Farron Khan, Deputy County Council. This is uh, Paul Cummings uh, from the Department of Public Health. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of the ordinance and uh, updates since we were last here over a year ago. Um, and, and then Paul will tell you why it's a great ordinance. Uh, uh, so the ordinance um, aligns uh, e-cigarette uh, sales and usage um, with uh, our current uh, tobacco-free laws and tobacco restrictions. So you can think of it in, in terms of uh, two things. Um, one is the way you can purchase electronic cigarettes, and the other is um, where you can use them. Uh, with respect to purchase, uh, our initial restrictions paralleled uh, what we restricted locally. So that would be uh, basically no free samples uh, and, and no vending machines for electronic cigarettes. Uh, that's what we have in our uh, tobacco, our local tobacco ordinances. Uh, since we were last here, uh, we've used it up a bit um, and put in language that is effective on the state level for tobacco, but uh, there is no uh, local legislation uh, relating to these factors, and that's um, self-service displays. So what that is is, you know how for cigarettes, uh, you can't just pick them up like Snickers bars. Uh, somebody has to get, go get them for you, the clerk has to go get them, uh, and then you make your purchase. So um, we've, we've aligned with that basic restriction. Uh, and the other major usage uh, restriction we've added is um, uh, ID checks. So if somebody looks uh, younger than a certain age, um, uh, the clerk has to ID check them um, um, to make sure they're over 18. Uh, 18 is, is the law for, for tobacco. 18 is also the law for electronic cigarettes <coughs> statewide. However, there's no check on that, so, so we're putting that in place. Um, so that's the, uh, those are the sales restrictions. Uh, and then when it comes to the usage restrictions, um, you know, you're, you're free to use them um, where you can smoke cigarettes. Um, and you're not free to use them where you can't. So, you know, uh, in the home, private places, okay. Um, you know, in the workplace, not okay. Uh, and in and in indoor public places, um, not okay. Um, those are the you know the basic basic alignment is is just what you have in your mind when you think about um, tobacco product usage. Uh, another, another change that occurred is within the definitions. Uh, when we were last here, we had defined uh, electronic cigarettes separately. So uh, we, had, we basically, we say everywhere you can't use tobacco products, you can't use electronic smoking devices. Now we put it in our definition that uh, electronic smoking devices are tobacco products. Uh, the rationale behind that is on the, uh, on the federal level, um, FDA proposals um, write uh, electronic smoking devices as tobacco products. Uh, same on the state level um, for proposed legislation. And then where, where there actually is legislation, which is the local level, um, most, and, uh, if not all, um, of the legislation uh, within the county 
uh, for these sorts of uh, restrictions <coughs> define uh, electronic cigarettes as uh, tobacco products. Uh, I'll turn it over to Paul. Yeah. Is that is that fuzzy? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, so I'm Paul Cummings. I work for the Public Health Department. And um, for the most part, we're here to, to listen and, and um, hear comments from people um, so that, that all of that can be incorporated um, when this goes to, to the Board of Supervisors. Um, a couple things that um, I can share as far as the rationale. Is it buzzing? No, I got, I'm getting it. Okay, that. cool. No. <laughs> um, I have, um, and I didn't bring enough of these, I'm sorry. Uh, the executive summary of the state um, health officer's report on e-cigarettes, and I'll just summarize a couple of these. Um, in 2014, teen use of e-cigarettes surpassed the use of traditional cigarettes for the first time, uh, with more than twice as many 8th and 10th graders reporting using e-cigarettes than traditional cigarettes. Um, if that meant that the the use of, of cigarettes had, had dropped suddenly, that might be good news, but that hasn't happened. So, so we've seen an increase in nicotine use amongst young people. Um, um, but I, the other one I, I really want to point out is in California, the number of calls to the Poison Control Center involving e-cigarette exposure in children under age five tripled in one year. Um, and, and part of that is that um, when people buy the, the liquids, uh, um, there is no child-proof cap. And um, so if we've got a sweet liquid that also has a lot of nicotine in it, then as a, you know, we're, we're really concerned as to how many children are going to get sick from that. Um, um, there is no scientific evidence that e-cigarettes helps smokers success successfully quit traditional cigarettes. E-cigarette users are no more likely to quit than regular smokers, with one study finding 89% of e-cigarette users still using them one year later. Another study found that e-cigarette users are a third less likely to quit cigarettes than using other methods. Um, <laughs> As far as marketing, um, in three years, the amount of money spent on advertising aged cigarettes increased more than 1,200%. Um, many ads state that e-cigarettes are a way to get around smoking bans, which undermines smoke-free social norms. Um, and in general, the idea that it really looks like these product, products um, are targeted in part to young people. and. Um, helping them get used to, to using nicotine. So um, there are a lot of concerns about these. We don't have all the answers yet. And that's why the recommendation is that, that we put some regulations on these um, and, and, you know, and see what happens because we really want to protect the young people. So thank you. Before I yeah. have speakers, uh, now it's my understanding you're going to be taking us around if you gone to like um, the Mac and to the San Lorenzo Homes and all other places? Um, we we did not take it to Sonol. We were told that it did not need to go there. It went to the Castro Mac last week, um, and um, it, it we were not taking it to, to San Lorenzo Village Homeowners Association. Was there any other place? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so I know the Mac. Because they sent me their their information, mm -hmm. the the Mac made a motion. Let's see. That they advised the board of supervisors that the jury is still out on vaping has not been proven hazardous to your health. Vapor is not smoke. Any cigarettes that do not contain tobacco or not and cannot be considered tobacco product. E-cigarettes should absolutely not be lumped in with tobacco products because they are not in and of themselves tobacco products. The board should be cognizant and give serious consideration to the 
fact that the ordinance as written may not, uh, as written may be more about the financial health and public health that is being pushed by entities which have a vested interest in maintaining cash flow and the state tobacco fund via ultimate taxation of e-cigarettes as tobacco products. The enactment of this ordinance will actually deter smokers from quitting tobacco and will have a negative impact on public health. Mm -hmm. This draft ordinance is more problematic than the previous and too overarching and should be either thrown out or rethought and rewritten yet again. The only change to the ordinance worth saving are that which makes it illegal for e-cigarettes to be sold to minors. Um, let's see here, uh, it should be taken to ensure that it's kept on the counter, not sold in vending machines, uh, mandatory carding. And then the final thing is rather than lumping e-cigarettes with tobacco, the county should begin work anew on a dedicated e-cigarette ordinance that unless and involves the stakeholders and those directly affected by uh, the ordinance through the open public process and further move that this motion of the MAC be presented in its entirety to the Board of Supervisors as part of the staff report. The vote was four yeses for the motion rejecting the ordinance, uh, one abstention and two members uh, I guess were uh, not there were excused. So I just wanted to make sure that this was part of the record because this is the map is pointed by me that um, gives advice to board supervisors from Castro Valley and that's what they are putting forward. And I think the Mac has heard this on two, three occasions. Yeah, they most recently heard it last Monday. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's open it up. Uh, do we have any comments, questions on the proposed ordinance? If, you, if there are, just uh, come to the, the mic, state your <coughs> Position. Susan Kligo. Go ahead. Susan Kligo, I'm from the Center of the Village Homes Association. So this is the first complete revision that I've seen in about nine months. Um, the last time this came to the Homes Association, we had a one-page summary of the comments of the Castro Valley MAC and not the complete wording of the ordinance. I've looked through it briefly. I don't see the provisions here about fees for uh, the uh, sellers that were in the previous versions. Is that not part of this ordinance? Yeah, that's a different ordinance. That's the tobacco retail licensing ordinance. But and that also included the e-cigarettes. As, as written, yes, that would um, require that, that retailers that sold e-cigarettes get a tobacco retailer license. Um, but it, that there are no fees associated with this. There are fees associated with that. Okay, but so. they're, they're going to be sort of together in that. And I think that's why the map may have stated about that this is an effort by those that would get funding sources for enforcement, and then that was what was pushing this, as opposed to the health concerns, uh, because I, that was what the Homes Association was concerned about was the cost to businesses and the fees and it didn't cover the full enforcement but there was a grant and the grant was going to be for a certain limited time and therefore afterwards the cost would be borne by the county so there was a lot of discussion about the costs of enforcement um, so I'm kind of thinking that they, they're kind of meshed together. Maybe you know the, the, the comment that was made last week was specifically about taxation and this, regardless of how they're defined, there would be no additional tobacco taxes on e-cigarettes. Uh, currently, the the tobacco tax that that we have in in California only applies to cigarettes, um, cigars, chew, all that stuff is is not taxed the same way that the cigarettes are taxed. But so if you're defining this product as tobacco, would that it, not? It would not. Cigars are a tobacco product, and they're not taxed um, through through the tobacco tax. This, there, there is no revenue associated with this. That's the case in this state, right? Yes. That's not the case in Ohio. 
Yeah, well, there's no, there's no revenue associated for, for Alameda County. Right. So I, think, um, so I think I've seen some articles that in order to, to fill the tobacco master settlement fund in other uh, jurisdictions, Virginia, Ohio, et cetera, there are allegations that this is a mechanism to do that. That's why people want to lump it with lump, lump e-cigarettes with tobacco so they can fill that fund up some more because that fund is running out. Hi, right, Steve Kirk again, San Lorenzo. Um, I just want to go back to a point that I think Cheryl made about we don't get a whole lot of we to get this at these meetings, but we don't have a lot of time to comment on it because mm -hmm. we just get it. Yeah. And I see the date on this is November of 2014, so you've had this for a few months. And I just don't, I mean, it's frustrating to hear that you, you know, you want to go to Sonoma, which has a thousand people and, and one place to sell anything there, I think. And then, you know, Castro Valley, which is understandable, but, and I'm sure the, the board there had time to read this before they had their comments made. And then you come here for the rest of the community and we don't get any, you know, we just get the report on the table and have to read it in five minutes. It's just very frustrating that we don't get to see this in advance mm -hmm. and get to comment on it. So I just, I just wanted to say that, and it's just, I don't know, it's just frustrating that the communities without a Mac seem to have a lot less of a voice for input than, than the ones that But if I could interject here, we wanted to bring it to San Lorenzo, but, right? We had, um, I, I thought that it had gone to San Lorenzo and we were planning on not bringing it back. Did I misunderstand? You were doing it? Yeah. My understanding is it went to San Lorenzo. Okay. It's not, he suggested it to San Lorenzo. TRL went to San Lorenzo, which yeah. is the community that they've been doing as well. I thought both had been to San Lorenzo. No. He said it's never. We have not seen, we've never seen this. It's the first time I've ever seen it. That's why we thought it was the same as the cigarette. Right? We thought it was the. Yeah, there's the there's the tobacco retail license yeah, ordinance, that's one ordinance, which is still right. That's why we not ready. The, the, the licensing piece. Then this is the use ordinance. So two separate ordinances. We've never seen the fifty cents. Okay. Thank so, you. It, you're on the board still. Mm -hmm. I, are you requesting that it come to some of them? Yeah, I would love that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can decide if we want to have it on the agenda, but yeah, at least it's nice to get asked. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I'm Dr. Kathy McDonald. I uh, am the project director for the Alvin County Alcohol Tobacco and other drug provider network. And we do a lot of work across throughout the county helping people to uh, put tobacco and uh, put in place uh, protective tobacco uh, policies. And I also do a lot of work with communities, helping them to put tobacco. And I want to speak in favor of this ordinance because I think it's very important for, to protect Albany County youth from excessive exposure to electronic cigarettes in public places. These devices, as all of you know, are very cool looking, often glowing, and producing vapor as well as coming from enticing flavors. Um, and they're really appealing to you. And that's why we have this, um, we had a threefold increase between 2011 and 2013, according to the Morbidity and Mortality Report Weekly, in the use of these cigarettes by you. Um, they remain completely unregulated, and their short and long term side effects are largely unknown. Um, our youth need to be protected from using these cigarettes because those, most of them contain nicotine, which is a highly addictive substance. And we know that not only they may be hooked on nicotine for life, which is not a pleasant experience for the average person. Addiction is not a pleasant experience. I work with a lot of people who are very unhappy that they are addicted and trying desperately to stop. And so that is a risk from these products, as well as the risk of use prior to the age of 25 when the prefrontal cortex is fully developed. The effects of nicotine um, in the developing brain are such that it can produce long-term cognitive deficits. Um, so uh, these recommendations are aimed at specifically at protecting against indoor air contaminants and limiting the visual reinforcement of seeing people vaping. They do not keep people who want to vape 
from using vaping tobacco products in other settings. So, um, as I said, I strongly support uh, the implementation of this ordinance. It's very much in line with ordinances in place in New York City, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. Thank you for that, because you know I just because I think I don't think anyone's arguing that there shouldn't be regulation. Because even the Max says there should be a dedicated e-cigarette ordinance. <laughs> the issue is whether or not it should be. Um, seen as a tobacco product. I think that's the issue that people have. And I have, I've been seeing a lot of authority on both sides of this issue, both pro and con. And one authority, uh, out of Dr. Michael uh, Siegel, who worked with me when I was on the Open City Council and I passed ordinances dealing with tobacco. At that point, it was like cutting edge stuff. Uh, it's his, his opinion and he's back at Harvard, it's his opinion that uh, we shouldn't be equating e-cigarettes with tobacco. And actually he's come out condemning public health for taking that position. So I'm of the opinion that e-cigarettes need to be regulated, but to demonize it as tobacco is, is, is wrong because we don't have enough information to make that determination. And so I know I'm going to be opposing this ordinance if it gets to the Board of Supervisors in the form that it's being presented. I will oppose it and I will oppose it vehemently, as long as it equates tobacco and e-cigarettes as the same product. And I'm one who pushed to get tobacco regulated um, back before anybody was even thinking about this sort of stuff. I'm the one who's fought alcohol. I'm the one who's done a lot of work around substance abuse. So, as a policymaker, I know my position on this. I'm Serena Chen from the American Law Association, and I was standing by your side all the way through in Oakland to help Oakland be the largest city in California to prohibit smoking in workplaces and in restaurants. So I was there right with you, and Michael Siegel was there right with me too. And basically, all of us have a right to our own opinions based on our experiences and what we know. So I respect your right to your opinion. I also respect the health officer of the state of California who has spent over two or three years studying all the research on electronic cigarettes. And I respect that as an MD and as an MPH that this man and his staff were able to put together a report uh, which was a health advisory and alert for health professionals because health professionals were confused about the use of electronic cigarettes, whether or not they should prescribe them or not, whether or not they should encourage their use. So the health officer of the state of California has issued a health advisory and warning about electronic cigarettes. And I think that um, Michael Siegel, I know him quite well, he used to call me mom. So this is not a small thing. Um, Dr. Siegel has found a niche in himself to, to publicize and question public health, uh, public health statements. And some of the questions he has are valid, and some I feel are not valid. So I just have to say I respect his opinion on many things, and I respect your opinion on many things. And I want folks to know that the health officer of the state of California also has an opinion enough to release an entire report. Um, I also want to mention that the reason, the only reason why electronic cigarettes were invented were because a, a doctor, a Chinese doctor in China, his father was dying of lung cancer. And he was trying to find a way to help his el elderly father stop using combustible cigarettes. So he spent a lot of time in the research lab and he designed a product to help his father quit smoking combustible products. So arguably, many health professionals do say that ele electronic smoking devices do not deliver as many poisons as combusting or burning a product. It doesn't mean that it's safe. The other issue that has come up is that uh, a lot of times people say that all the contents are harmless. The organization that oversees uh, the flavorants, the, uh, it's called FEMA, it's called Flavorants, well, anyway, it's an industry group. They have issued a public statement on their website that basically says that they do not support the electronic cigarette industry claiming that their, um, their, their liquid flavorants are safe for inhalation. Because basically the FDA ruled that all the flavorants that are being used are okay for ingestion. Well, when you eat something, you have stomach acids. 
When you eat something bad, you throw it up. You, you get rid of it. But when you inhale something bad, your lungs don't throw up. So basically, there is that concern. Um, we have all the research on smoking because we've had 50 years of studying people who've gone through it. So we know for sure, everything we say about smoking, we know for sure. We don't have the numbers and we don't have the guinea pigs yet to study for whether or not these products are safe or not. We know that they help some people quit smoking. That's un undisputable. Also, the, the fact of the matter is, is that the electronic cigarette industry sued to be called a tobacco product. In 2009, the FDA confiscated their products, looked at them and said, these are, these are medical delivery devices. These are drug delivery devices, and they, therefore they should be regulated as a drug delivery device. So the electronic cigarette industry, seeing that they were between a rock and a hard place, said, oh no, we're not, we're a tobacco product. Because they knew that the FDA's ruling on tobacco products was going to take years to get to it, because they have a huge honeydew list. So basically, when people accuse the health department of having a monetary interest in going after e-cigarettes, you can have that opinion. But I, I can also have an opinion that all the information coming out in support of e-cigarettes is from an industry that is selling the product. So basically, it's even Stephen, maybe. But in terms of public health, we're trying to reduce cigarette consumption, and we're trying to reduce nicotine addiction. And by consuming a product that gives you nicotine is not a way to reduce nicotine addiction, only as used as a cessation tool. And if you're used as a cessation tool, then you should follow the rules and guidelines that other cessation tools that are studied and verified follow. You don't break the rules and say, I help people quit because these people have quit. Well, that's not provable yet. And when it becomes provable, Fine, but again, last week uh, someone spoke saying they liked e-cigarettes because they had sizzle. Well, that's the very reason why we don't like them. If e-cigarettes help people quit, then they should be marketed as quitting devices. They should be shown to be safe for the people using them. Uh, they should not be on TV with sexy people using them. They should not be uh, in Sports Illustrated ads with the uh, e-cigarette sticking out of a, a woman's bikini bottom. If you look at the advertising for e-cigarettes, you can tell they're not marketed to people who really want to quit smoking. They're marketed to make money. And it's, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry now because it's unregulated. And so what's happened is we can't wait for the federal government to act. Local communities, when Nate was in the Oakland City Council, he was a city who said, look it, we can't wait for the state to act, we can't wait for the feds to act. We have to act to protect people from secondhand smoke. And you did that. And so this is basically what we're saying. We're not stopping anybody from using electronic cigarettes, uh, whatever they may. And uh, we're just saying, don't hope kids on it. It changes the child's brain development permanently. Uh, don't do that. Market it the way you want it, where it is legitimate, and don't go after our children. Because our children are, have tripled their use of electronic cigarettes. Because even those the law gets them by and they get their hands on it. And it's up to the cities and the counties to put rules on it. And I just want to say that here in Alameda County, there are nine cities that have already passed this, uh, uh, the secondhand smoke protections. The nine cities are Berkeley, Dublin, Emeryville, Fremont, Hayward, Piedmont, Pleasanton, San Leandro, and Union City. There are six, that's over 800,000 people already protected in Alameda County. The cities, there are six cities uh, with over 900,000 people total that have included electronic smoking devices in the sale of tobacco. And these cities are Albany, Dublin, Fremont, Hayward, Oakland, and Union City. And then, well, what are the other counties doing? How are they protecting their unincorporated the areas? Okay. Every single county state. attached uh, next to Alameda County has passed this ordinance. So, BART just passed it. Uh, AC Transit has asked us for help to do it. Right now, 18 million Californians, or over 40% of the state's population, have local laws protecting them. Okay. The, um, who was the health officer for the state who wrote that opinion? It was uh, Ron Chapman. Chapman. Was he fired? You know. Okay. I guess I'm going to ask the question. I think, I think okay. he was fired. He, he wasn't. Okay. I don't know okay. about right. his employment, okay. but it had nothing to okay. do with. I, I know it had nothing to do with e cigarettes, it had to do with room homes. 
of which I work, which I work on. I work on a lot of issues, and Chapman has been discredited. So, but raise it in the Board of Supervisors, and I'll ask the same question about Chapman's uh, credibility. Uh, now, once again, we aren't saying e-cigarettes shouldn't be regulated. We are saying e-cigarettes should be regulated. They need to be regulated. I'll be the first to say they're going to be regulated, but I will not support uh, equating them to a tobacco product at this point in time. Uh, and do and do we think e-cigarettes are safe? We don't know that they're totally safe. Hey, just recently an e-cigarette blew up in somebody's hand. Um, so, e but they need to be regulated. It's a product that needs to be regulated, and that's the issue. Regulate it, uh, but don't regulate it as a tobacco product. That's what what people are saying. Regulate it, but not as a tobacco product. And I don't know why, in heaven's name. Um, it's got to be equated with a tobacco product to get it regulated. It can be regulated on its own merits. And I think that's what the MAC is saying. I don't know what San Lorenzo, when they hear this matter, what they're going to say. But just because other jurisdictions in the county and other places in the state are doing it one way, you know, that's, that's them. I know I've, I've gotten a lot of information on this. I've been schooled on this. I've done my homework on this. And I know my position on this. And uh, in unincorporated Alameda County, of which we will have jurisdiction over, we can do something different. And we might be end up being on the side of right as opposed to wrong. So, next speaker. Good evening and thank you. Is that wrong? Yeah, Is everybody here? Something's wrong with it. I don't know what's going on. My name is Maxine Valley and I live in Castro Valley. And I'm just seeing this whole um, ordinance for the first time in its entirety. And I cannot support this either. I think that uh, the language is too vague and too wide. It's too broad. If you're talking about tobacco, talk about tobacco. If it's e-cigarettes, then talk about e-cigarettes. And that I don't think that we can really equate the two of them. And I'd like to see uh, some, uh, along with the studies, comparison studies of, of the uh, teenagers that are uh, using e-cigarettes and what percentage in that same range or, or how long, how big is the test uh, percentage or control group that are using tobacco. I'd like to see something more. I know it looks scientific, but I'd like to see something with some more hard numbers on this. I can't sleep with this. Kathy Gill, Castro Valley. Um, it seems to me like we're talking about tobacco, non-tobacco. Why don't we just call them nicotine products and solve the whole thing? Hi there. Um, I'm Dave Walken. I'm here to the speaker, but um, I am very passionate about my business and my industry. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Nate for his um, advocacy and support in our industry. Um, I'm a 41-year Alameda County resident. Um, I went to Catholic school. I went to UC Berkeley. I'm a great business person. Um, I own Body Rock Products. We are in San Leandro. We produce um, e-liquids um, for e-cigarette type devices. However, we don't associate ourselves with cigarettes at all. We are not a smoking cessation device. We are created for the hobbyists. So we are sort of the fine wine compared to um, a beer. I have a problem with the definition of e-cigs. Um, our products, most of our products are very, very low nicotine, and a lot of our sales are no nicotine at all. Um, the Department of uh, Public Health, um, can you go back over the definition of an e-cigarette again? Because I heard a little bit about it, but it was kind of a vague definition of an e-cigarette. Because my company, um, we don't sell any kind of devices um, that are e-cigarettes. We sell liquids, um, most of them not having nicotine. So saying these are nicotine um, products is not necessarily true. Um, can you go over that definition one more time, real quick? So the definition of what electronic smoking devices is not. We don't define nicotine. We define electronic smoking devices, and we define it to include cartridges, carbonizers, e-liquid smoke, juice, tips, atomizers, etc. So your product would be, uh, 
would be within this definition because it's, it's a part and it's a, it's a car. So it's more about the device that is being used in. If this product were in an inhaler and somebody were inhaling it, um, would it still be considered an e-cigarette? If we're in a medical inhaler, um, you know, some of the ingredients are the same. Um, in asthma inhalers, as they are in products. Yeah, there's a, there's a difference in the beginning of the definition. You can take a look. Um, we define it as meaning any product containing or delivery nicotine or any other substance intended for human consumption that can be used by a person to simulate smoking through inhalation of vapor or aerosol from the product. It sounds a bit vague. I mean, it sounds like it could also apply to inhalers or anything else, possibly um, a fog machine or something else that produces vapor. Um, I noticed you went over uh, poison control um, and the popularity of e-cigarettes, of course, um, in the industry, you're going to get more calls. Um, do you guys have any kind of parallel program um, for public health, for responsible parenting, or any kind of any kind of things that help people? Um, you know, I'm sure when NyQuil or these other cold medicines were invented, there were more calls. It is becoming more popular. Of course, there are going to be calls. Um, that's kind of in the hands of the parents, not really banning these and sales in the industry. It's more on parenting than it is on sales of these products. I mean, everyone who's using our products are, are 18. Our stores that sell these products um, require everyone to be 18 years old to even walk in the door to sample or try these products. Um, what you're not thinking about with these regulations is stores that are allowing people to sample these stores, not to sample these products. I employ seven people who are currently unemployed getting money from the state. Now I'm paying taxes, we pay sales tax, and there are over 3,000 of our businesses within California right now. Um, an ordinance like this could prevent people from trying these products in stores. It could put these businesses you know, out of business. Hundreds of thousands of people could be um, unemployed due to this. Um, you also discussed childproof caps. Um, our products have childproof caps. They have safety seals on them. Um, we do our best um, to make sure that ch uh, children don't get a hold of our products. Um, that's kind of on the makers of these products. Um, we are launching a Not For Minors campaign coming up soon. Um, it's going to be like an anonymous tip line for anybody who has our products and finds them, you know, a minor in possession. We want them reported to us. So we're doing our best to make sure they're not targeted to minors, even though they're sweet flavors. Adults like sweets as well. Um, I think that's about it. Just a few things you I wanted to say. When you said you're in San Leandro, are yes. you San Leandro? Or we're a San Leandro business. We are members of the San Leandro Chamber. Oh, you're in the city of San Leandro? Yes. Okay. Um, Do they have an ordinance in place? Um, not right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We were not aware of it yet. Pardon? I mean, we're producing these liquids. Yeah, I think so. I, you know, we're a wholesaler, so we're selling to businesses. Mm -hmm. Most of our businesses, with, with you know, outside of California, is but, he in violation of the San Leandro ordinance? Probably not. The San Leandro is on second place. Okay, then that's not the same thing. Then. No, it's not. Okay. Um, <laughs> so because that's what they had an ordinance, I think. Oh. Okay. So yeah. basically, you're not supposed to be using these devices. <laughs> Right. Um, ordinances like this to you know prevent people from going in and trying these e-cigarettes or purchasing them without trying them, sending them back to cigarettes. Um, this is a fairly safe product. We put it out, you know, with all cares to our, you know, to the, the public and our consumers. Um, putting in ordinances like this could put us all out of business. So, uh, for me. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate. Your I appreciate what you said about uh, parents, too, because it gets me on another track, you know. It's not like I don't support public health. I generally agree with public health. But I know, for instance, there are people, not just in our public health department, but like in San Francisco in the past, laws dealing with sh sugar drinks to address obesity. Mm -hmm. Now, I think, once again, that's the parent's responsibility. Right. The government should be passing it. <laughs> because where, where do you stop? Do you stop with the candy? You know, where do you stop it? in terms of passing the law dealing with obesity and sugar. So to me, it's one of the parental responsibility, not the responsibility of the government. So if our public health department doesn't pull that one here in Alameda County, I'm going to be opposing that as well. My Sweet Tea Leaves Use Line was actually created by my girlfriend as a personal trainer um, for providing people with something sweet so they don't have to eat sweets. Um, our products are mainly vegetable glycerin and flavoring with a little bit of sweetener. We'll vape instead of um, having dessert, um, so we can be preventing diabetes, um, obesity, things like that. There's other uses for these products besides quitting smoking. Most of our users, zero nicotine, they just like to vape, they want to taste the flavors. Um, putting a ban like this in place will stop you know, something from happening.
and products are, you know, a lot of them are zero nicotine. There's not many tobacco products you can do this. Delicious. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We are turning into monsters. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a lot of this is a zero nicotine version, so don't try that at home. Right. 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 Call the sheriff. You know. <laughs> My name is Del Speed, and I'm a business owner here in Castro Valley. I've been in business for 25 years. Uh, 10 years ago, I opened a business on the boulevard. Uh, I've got 10 people that are employed at that business. And in the last five years, nine, or five years ago, I had 10 smokers out of 10 employees. In the last five years, nine of those 10 have quit smoking cigarettes, and eight of them have stopped using the vape pipe altogether. Mm -hmm. So the line that you say that it's not proven, I don't know where that date is coming from. My bet is it was probably backed by the tobacco industry. Um, for those studies, but I will tell you in my business, 90% of the people in my office have quit smoking tobacco. Um, and the other cities where 800,000 people supposedly are now safe, to use her word, <laughs> from this product, all you've done is push 800,000 people to continue using tobacco in a burning cigarette. Uh, my name is uh, Steve Alanis. I'm a resident of uh, San Leandro. I want to uh, second the thought of parents and bad parenting. Um, I treat this uh, this product that you juice uh, just like any other parent should with uh, their packs of cigarettes, their guns that they lock up, um, and things like that. Uh, my child, I have a I have a four year old. She knows not to touch any of those type of products, and I don't leave my gun out, uh, out loaded oh, and for her. No, of course not. As well as my juices. My juices are not in anywhere for her to be touching or in any range for her. I have cabinets that are high up. Yes, when she gets taller and she can reach them, I'm going to have to move them higher and away from her. But by that time, she will learn to know not to have these products. Uh, there was an um, article that probably everybody knows in the vaping industry of a child who did drink yeah. a bottle of it, and it was disgusting to see the news article of this parent who tried to, I guess you could say, attack the people who were making the e-juices just to try to get a dollar to say that she was a bad parent. Because she had her juices out and the child definitely consumed the bottle, but where was that parent to watch that child? Um, I'm very, very um, uh, prone on watching my child. Um, yes, there's a lot of us who have that moment where our child will be out, but my e my e juices are not out for her to play with. My vape pens are not even around for her to be playing with because they have heat, they're hot, they have batteries. I treat it just as much as a loaded gun in a safe and stuff like that. So that's why I want to definitely back on the whole bad parenting and not e juice makers and sellers of this product. Any other comments, questions? My name is Randy Rogers. I work at uh, Ready Set Bay in Castro Valley. Um, this ordinance is really sickening once you really start looking at it and realize what's going on. <coughs> Um, they're absolutely going to end up doing more harm than good if this does go through. I get people off of cigarettes every single day, and if this ordinance goes through, it's going to take back some of the work that me and my co-workers have put in. This ordinance was written by Change Lab Solutions, Change Labs. Now, they are largely funded by Johnson & Johnson um, Pharmaceuticals, and Johnson & Johnson are the ones that make the patch, the gum, um, so they do have a very large interest in making sure that if you do quit cigarettes, you quit using their products. Um, they're not really concerned with public health. They're not really concerned with saving lives. They're concerned with making sure that their wallets stay fat. And that's the unfortunate part about all of this, because now they're going around using scare tactics, propaganda, and the domino effect. They'll tell you everywhere where it has passed, but that doesn't mean that those counties are any safer in my eyes that makes them more dangerous. Um, so I really do appreciate when we do have politicians that can come out and see what 
is right and wrong. Um, and I encourage everybody to do your research, think about how this can actually work, because we do need to regulate this, but in a more intelligent fashion. Um, assemble a board of professionals, let's talk about it, let's figure out what the facts really are, see some real studies. I would love to know who funded the studies in this ordinance, because um, I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to come back to the guys on top. Um, thank you. I would like to request a presentation at the chairman uh, association meeting. Please. <laughs> oh, right. Here you go. Chair here too. So, but I just said, yes, yeah, depending what, yeah, depending what Cherry Land does, what San Lorenzo does, and what the MAC does, we'll have a lot of sway on okay. at least three supervisors or two supervisors. I don't know how city you do not want to hear about this. I, I, I just would like to comment that um, Johnson and Johnson are not the makers of any nicotine replacement products. So just let's make sure that we're clear on our facts. We are the same owner started both businesses. So so um so Ingrid, can you make sure Paul has your information and so you can schedule time for the presentation of Cherry Lane and then Kathy? Sue. I'm sorry, Sue. Which San Lorenzo was, okay. Alright, any other comments or questions on this? Uh, one other thing I just think folks should know. Um, Leno has a piece of legislation. It's uh, SB... SB... Is it SB 140? Yes. Yeah. SB 140, Leno's legislation. And it uh, addresses this issue in terms of making this product uh, uh, so much tobacco. And the Board of Supervisors Legislative Committee has uh, approved this for the Board of Supervisors of Albany County to support. The committee's approved it. This item is coming to the full board probably sometime next month. I'll be opposing that legislation because I've already written a letter in opposition to it. And minimally, I'd like the Board of Supervisors to take a neutral position. The board can't uh, hope a neutral position. So if you have an opinion on whether or not the Board of Supervisors should be taking a position on Leno's legislation, um, should let the Board of Supervisors know either by contacting the Board in advance or coming to the Board meeting in April. Because it does the same thing that locally is being proposed. Okay, just a quick question. Um, am I to understand that they're going to hear that on the 7th of April, possibly? And uh, that Leno's bill wouldn't be heard until the 8th? I find it kind of odd that they would, uh, would um, come out and support something that hasn't even yet had a chance to have a public hearing in the second week. All I know is the Social Health Committee, public health, I mean, the public health care. Both. Both, okay. So our public health department and our health care services agency, they both have taken the legislation to the Health Committee, which they can do, mm -hmm. and ask the board to weigh in and support of this legislation. So, so that's, that's, you know, it's our, our um, department and agency that's uh, advancing this to the board. Mm -hmm. And the committee, I think, has approved it for a uh, support position. Okay. So the full board will, will hear this, uh, I don't know if it's April 7th. If, do we know if it's April 7th? No. Yeah. yeah, we don't know, but we'll, we'll let you know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any, any other comments or questions on it? Uh, item four. All right, so, so it's my understanding it's just going to go to San Lorenzo and then to uh, Cherryland. And I guess after that point, then we can bring it to the full board. Okay, so hopefully at some point we'll get this matter to the full board and keep addressed and get resolved one way or the other. Um, okay, so let's see, this is almost April, so maybe by May, maybe we can get it to the full board supervisor. Uh, Supervisor, I think if I think the our intent was to to collect all of the comments and information um, to not do any further revisions uh, and 
let, let right. your board of supervisors make the final decision. Yeah, yeah that's my understanding too. Of the ordinance as it is, is standing based on what county council and public health is presented. So the ordinance will be presented as is, but they're gathering comments. Like the map, they submitted their their motion. So Cherryland has a position, San Lorenzo has a position. We want to know that. And so all of that would be presented as part of the staff report when it comes to the board. And then the board can decide whether to vote the ordinance up, vote it down, modify it, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But the ordinance itself, they're, you know, we're taking keep the same ordinance because it's come out of the home committee. And this is the ordinance it's being chopped down for, for comment at this point. Okay. All right. If there's, not, if there's nothing else this evening, I think we're, we're, we're good.